So, now in continuation to the hot dipping operation in part 2, we will discuss about hot dip uh, galvanizing process that is specifically the hot dipping of zinc and its alloys. So, as I mentioned you that the hot dipping of uh, zinc is very important and particularly for zinc deposition among most of the parallel techniques 75 percent of the industries they do look for coating by hot dipping technique. So, because of the biggest advantage of having the completely dense uh, uh, pore free coating and very strong interface. Now, if you talk about and also very thick deposited layer. Now, if you talk about the uh, zinc coating thickness which is desired, you will find that because of its application or application requirement or maybe the requirement of its surface in corrosive environment thicker the coating better is it better is the service life. So, service life changes from 5 years to as high as 80 years uh, uh, depending on the thickness. So, you will find that uh, thickness uh, is around uh, 3 if you do if you go on increasing the thickness from 0.25 mils to 3 mils the uh, um, or maybe you can say that uh, 10 micron to 120 micron 130 micron the service life increases from uh, 0 hour or maybe you can say that uh, 1 year to as high as 80, uh, 80 years. So, thickness of zinc is very important. So, that uh, apart from the all the parallel uh, techniques which are available for zinc, depo zinc deposition you will find that hot dim galvanizing offers the maximum thickness on the surface with uh, strong interface. And apart from that, uh, you will find uh, spray deposition technique also offers very high thickness, but in spray deposition technique, the interface is not really so strong as in hot dipping. And also, there are few porosities or defects on the surface. So, usually, it is observed that hot dipping is preferred to spraying process for zinc deposition, where you are looking for very large surface surface life of the component. Now, if you talk about the uh, service life of component, you will find that it uh, certainly depends on the environment. So, in the rural environment where it there is not much pollution, you will find that not much uh, humidity, you will find that service life is higher than that of marine environment, than that of high temperature marine environment, than that of normal suburban and then industrial environment. In industrial environment, you get minimum lifetime because of presence of lot of porosities in the environment, uh, because of presence of lot of uh, different uh, uh, impurities in the environment and also different particles uh, which are present in the environment and a uh, lot of carbon suits, sulfur dioxide, these all uh, particles are also present in the environment. So, those particles basically they get deposited onto the surface different materials and when they are deposited on the sur surface naturally the absorptivity of the surface increases. So, we will find that surface will be more prone to absorb the moisture from the environment than that of the typical rural environment where there is not many impurities in the environment. So, as a result of which you will find that in industrial environment the surface life of the component by corrosion is much lower than that of the same in rural environment. So, you will find that the service life is basically the relative term it depends on the environment where the component is used, but whatever the environment may be as you go on increasing the thickness of the zinc coating you increase the service life to a large extent. So, as I mentioned you among these all parallel techniques hot dipping offers a maximum thickness so with a strong interface and apart from that the metallizing or thermal spraying route also offers a similar level of thickness, but in spraying technique the interface is not really so strong as in hot dipping at the interface there is always mechanical interlocking or maybe the um, interface is uh, basically uh, not uh, there is no interdiffusion layer at the interface, but uh, mechanism of bonding is interlocking mechanical interlocking and lot of porosities and defects are there in the coated layer 
when you develop it by thermal spray deposition technique. But you get similar level of thickness, but surface is also quite rough. When you talk about uh, about other uh, parallel techniques, those are like painting technique. In painting, you can have the zinc in dispersed uh, zinc as dispersed particles. So there, you will find that uh, paint layer again gives the very poor uh, interfacial bonding. But uh, thickness is also very low, not really so high as in hot dipping. And also, there are a lot of defects in the paint layer. Then finally, galvanized sheet. If you see, galvanized sheet is also galvanizing is also mechanical, uh, or maybe you can say that mechanical cladding is also another way of zinc coating. So where you basically take zinc sheet and steel sheet together, and then go on cladding it over each other by application of mechanical force. There, there is always a thickness limitation because if it is too thick, then there will be problem of non-uniformity. So, thickness is limited and interface is also very strong, but as strong as the this thermal spray deposition, it not, it's not really so strong as in uh, hot deep galvanizing. Now, another parallel route by which you can do zinc coating is by electro deposition process. So, here the thickness is of major trouble you cannot go beyond certain th thickness, maybe 20 to 25 micron is the maximum thickness that you can achieve when you go for electro deposition and interface is also not so strong. So, if you talk about different parallel techniques, you will find that so many techniques are available. So, depending on the applications, you have to look for the technique which you should opt for. So, when you are looking for the zinc coating for uh, mild environment, where the component shape is very much uh, very much uh, complicated in nature and you are interested to have very nice polishing fine polishing on the surface. You go for electro deposition, when you talk about the galvanizing for utilities and uh, furniture purpose, there you can go for this clad bonding operation in long structures like bridges you can go for painting operation or thermal spraying operation. In badge component uh, where dimension is also not so big, but uh, medium, medium size dimension, you can go for hot dipping operation by continuous processing. So, depending on the applications where you are looking for the coating, you can have, you can choose different coating techniques, but it is important that you choose proper coating technique and proper parameters to have the desired result in the coated product or de desired uh, properties of the coated product. Now, if you talk about hot deep galvanizing, then you will find as we mentioned you in the other case, here also the surface finishing is the or surface cleaning is the mandatory step which you, so, which you should follow prior to hot deep galvanizing. So, what you do is that uh, you basically go for several steps of cleaning like when there are uh, there are dirt particles or uh, dust on the surface you go for caustic cleaning and then rinsing and if you have then lot of uh, oxide layer on the surface you should go for pickling operation so in pickling you basically take 3 to 5 percent uh, hydrochloric acid solution and temperature is 35 to 40 degrees celsius so, you dip the component in the uh, pickle reagent for uh, 1 minute uh, to 2 minute maximum and then you take it out and then go for rinsing operation and then your surface is cleaned. And prior to hot dipping, you can go for flux solution dipping hmm, so that your surface is no more oxidized prior to your zinc coating then go for drying operation, then go for zinc coating and then you go for cooling and inspection and dispatch the component. So, these are the steps which are followed and this is a kind of batch processing and you can also make it uh, continuous processing by typical uh, having this kind of arrangement where you have the cleaning section, direct fire section and uh, hot dipping section and withdrawal section they are kept one after another. So, what you do is that 
in cleaning section you basically clean it by different techniques like solvent cleaning or pickling or drying these all techniques and then you can go for uh, fluxing operation and then you go for hot dipping and then finally, by jet finishing nozzle you just go on finishing and monitor the thickness and then you can go for galvanizing operation in the furnace. So, this is the hot dip galvanizing process uh, that continuous processing. So, now one of the biggest advantage of the hot dipping is that, uh, uh, that in hot dipping you get completely um, dense coating, so it is not you do not really get my many defects on the uh, surface of the coating except uh, the spangle formations and different design uh, designing is there and microstructural uh, segregation. So, apart from those techniques apparently those, uh, those defects apparently there is not many significant defects observed in the hot dipped uh, coating actually. So, it is very interesting way of uh, depositing on the surface of metallic materials which can offer very good corrosion resistance property. But one of the biggest disadvantage is that the interface, though interface is strong, but if you see the interface carefully you will find that at the interface there are several intermetallic layer formation. So, those intermetallics are highly brittle in nature. So, that brittleness of the intermetallic in the iron zinc system creates problem for applications or its applications. If it is pure iron zinc, uh, pure zinc uh, coating if you talk about. So, you will find that if you just quickly go through the iron zinc interface, you will find that at the interface there are uh, this is a zinc rich corner because usually when you, di you dip the uh, iron rich uh, component or iron based component in molten zinc, usually there is dissolution of iron from the surface and that dissolved iron basically mixes with zinc and then forms different intermetallics. So, you have to see the phase diagram from the zinc crease side. So, you find that from the iron rich side there are different intermetallics which might form like gamma 1, gamma 2 that uh, then delta phase, e zeta phase and then pure zinc uh, onto the top with iron in solution. So, these are the different intermetallics which can form at the interface uh, starting from the interface actually. So, these all intermetallics are not yet uh, I mean they are very much uh, brittle in nature most of the intermetallics. So, when you keep the iron zinc, uh, zinc coated particularly galvanized component in the normal environment, you will find that uh, there is formation of fine cracks after a long time. Hmm. So, these cracks are because of these all different intermetallics as I mentioned you which are formed and if you just quickly go through the intermetallics, you will find that they are having the typical ACP structure, monoclinic structure, FCC, BCC structures even though they are BCC uh, structures, but they are also not really show ductile as is normal FCC. Hmm. So, these all phases form one after another hmm. and uh, these all phases because of formation of these all phases you will find that uh, when you keep the, um, the galvanized steel for long time in normal environment there is formation of fine cracks starting from the interface towards the surface. So, fine cracks are not good because uh, it basically creates a path for the uh, transportation of water molecules from the environment, but uh, still it is acceptable as because of the fact that zinc also saves the surface by the process of the sacrificial action. So, even though there are present there are possibilities of formation of lot of intermetallics at the interface and which are brittle in nature the presence of whom actually creates trouble because the presence of whom actually can cause crack formation at the interface, but still as it is zinc coating it can it is acceptable because zinc coating offers the sacrificial action to save the underlying substrate. So, even though there is uh, that these all cracks formation on the at the interface, but still you will find that 
as zinc is there on the surface. So, zinc basically prefers any corrodes and by that process the steel is saved, underlying steel is saved. But again uh, even though that is there, but still you find that the overall lifetime of the component gets reduced. So, whatever the fact may be even though the steel substrate is saved, but still you cannot really allow the this kind of uh, de degradation to occur or maybe you cannot allow this kind of defects to form at the interface because it, uh, it deteriorates the overall service life of the component. So, when you talk about uh, reducing this particular when you talk about that uh, saving the component uh, by proper way what you go for is that you have to look for typical uh, different ways to combat uh, this kind of uh, uh, intermetallic formation. Usually people go for alloying with aluminum, they do go for alloying with different other metals as well in order to reduce the uh, kinetics of the iron zinc intermetallic formation. They also go for annealing operation to homogenize the microstructure. So, now this is a slide which shows you the uh, schematic of the intermetallic formation with time. So, when time is very short then if you just keep iron in zinc uh, molten zinc you will find there is no intermetallic, but gradually there is formation of intermetallic and the first intermetallic which forms is basically eta phase and then as you go on uh, increasing the time you will find that there is delta, delta phase formation zeta transforms to zeta prime or zeta 1 phase. And then gradually there is a formation of zeta 1 and zeta 2 and gamma phase also at the interface. So, finally, you will find the gamma phase at the interface followed by which there is delta phase then zeta 2 zeta 1 and then finally, zinc with iron in solution and pure zinc. So, these are the different intermetallic phase formation sequence when you dip the iron based alloy into the molten zinc. If you see the kinetics of the different uh, phase formation, you will find that they are having different kinetics. Like, uh, for example, if you talk about uh, gamma phase kinetics, uh, kinetics, so this is actually it is slowest. So, you will find that gamma phase forms at a much slower rate than that of the delta phase and that, that of the zeta phase. So, if you see the uh, then from the layer growth itself, you can say that. Uh, gamma phase kinetics is quite less. So, it is there at the interface, but uh, zeta and delta phase uh, formation kinetics is quite high. So, they form at a much faster rate. So, the kinetics of different phase formation is also equally important they are having different ten values. So, uh, if you are interested to get rid of the intermetallics as I mentioned you, you have to add some ternary elements into the molten zinc path. So, usually aluminum is a very popular ternary element which is added in the molten zinc in order to reduce the kinetics of this intermetallic formation. So, if you add aluminum naturally it serves several purposes first of all aluminum improves the oxidation resistance of this bath. Second purpose which is served is that uh, there is formation of iron aluminum intermetallic at the interface as a result of which the zinc cannot form any any kind of intermetallic with iron. So, it prevents the formation of iron zinc intermetallics by forming a very thin layer of iron aluminide on the surface. And third purpose which it uh, serves is that it promotes uh, that typical uh, it increases the luster of the coating actually. Hmm. So, because aluminum when you add aluminum you will find that coating is highly lusterous. So, usually in coat zinc bath uh, very low percentage of uh, aluminum up to 1 percent is added uh, which uh, basically serves these all purposes. So, you will find that the iron zinc intermetallic formation kinetics is reduced, but apart from 1 percent aluminum there are also two more aluminum percentage which are added in the zinc bath uh, by changing the composition itself one is 5 percent aluminum another one is uh, 55 percent aluminum which are called galphon bath and galvalume bath. So, in case of the case in the case where you have normal galvanizing with 0.1 percent aluminum you will find that intermediate formation 
is partly reduced you will find on the surface there is zinc coating and at the interface there is Fe 2 L 5 phase and the thick monolithic intermediate formation is reduced. Uh, so, for example, this is a case of 0.2 percent aluminum percentage uh, uh, galvanized coated microstructure. Here you will find that at the interface there is Fe 2 L 5 phase formation. So, this phase actually as I mentioned you it reduces the kinetics of Fe zinc intermediate formation, but as the aluminum content is quite less you will find that if you do not really control the time carefully you will see that there is the uh, failure of the uh, coating in a very large extent basically. So, it is called outburst formation. So, outburst formation is one of the biggest trouble associated with uh, uh, alumin iron zinc associated with the galvanizing where they have where you have very low percentage of aluminum. So, aluminum percentage is quite low so 0.2 percent. So, if time is very less there is no problem there is Fe 2 L 5 phase formation on top of that there is molten zinc actually with iron solution. But if your time is quite high what happens is that because of large time which is available there is uh, that molten metal diffusion through the intercolumnar porosities of the Fe 2 L 5 layer and that molten zinc actually can go inside the iron through grain boundaries and then creates form presence of or we maybe it forms different types of intermetallics at the grain boundary regions. So, you will find that there is local change in the uh, concentration of the zinc as a result of which local formation of iron zinc intermetallics. That iron zinc intermetallics creates trouble because it applies pressure and as a result of which after a while there is overall breakage of the Fe 2 L 5 layer which is called outburst formation. Hmm. So, outburst formation is never desired because not only it basically breaks the Fe 2 L 5 layer, but it can also apply such a high pressure that your coating can also spall out. So, this is the typical uh, mechanism of outburst formation which is uh, shown here. So, usually if aluminum percentage is quite low like 0.5 percent if you dip it for 0.5 minutes for example, when there is no chance of diffusion of the uh, zinc there is no trouble. But if you allow more time what would happen is that zinc will go on diffusing through the grain boundaries of the iron aluminide interface and which uh, grain boundaries actually match with the grain boundaries in alpha or may be alpha phase. So, what happens is that this particular zinc uh, gets diffused in and uh, when it diffused in through the grain boundaries naturally there is always chemical potential difference along the grain boundaries and the between the grain boundaries and inside grain as a result of which zinc again goes on diffusing uh, from grain boundary to the grains and there is intermediate liquid wherever there is diffusion of zinc it reacts with iron and there is iron zinc intermediate formation. So, intermediate formations are there at the interface uh, over there as well as intermediate formations are there along the grain boundaries. So, gradually there will be high, highly applied pressure on the grain boundary regions and this particular intermediate grows on the surface. So, after a while you will find that it applies lot of pressure. So, when you just go on taking it out you will find that the zinc coating basically spalls out. So, you have to be very much careful to and control the time carefully so that there is no chance of outburst formation. Otherwise you apply some more aluminum in the coated layer so that there is no possibility of the uh, outburst formation at the surface. So, in order to prevent that outburst for outburst formation or maybe uh, in order to improve the quality of the zinc coating further galvanized coating further you can have two more solution one is galfan coating where you add 5 percent aluminum in the coated layer. So, when you use uh, 5 percent aluminum in zinc that is typical inter uh, eutecta eutectic composition. So, what happens is that there is typical uh, eutectic uh, columns of iron and uh, aluminum and zinc uh, formation. 
So, you find that uh, as aluminum percentage is quite high, the outburst formation uh, time can be increased or maybe threshold time for outburst formation start can be enhanced. So, you have enough time for the galvanizing to do and on the other hand uh, another advantage of this uh, galvan coating is that in the microstructure you will get typical eutectic microstructure which offers higher strength. So, in this kind of coating you get a bit superior strength, you get uh, good corrosion resistance property. In addition to that you avoid the formation of the outburst because here aluminum percentage is very high. So, at this aluminum percentage if you are interested to form that outburst naturally you have to wait for some more time. But one of the biggest advantage of this uh, hot dip uh, galphoning is that uh, or maybe where you use galphon as a bath or 5 percent aluminum as the bath there is dent formation at the um, interface basically. So, this is because of the fact that when you go on solidifying it that at the middle layer uh, there is a steel liquid because it is a eutectic composition. So, temperature is quite low. So, if you think of solidification process you will find that all other layers solidifies, but last layer where uh, it is still in liquid state it gets uh, contracted because of solidification shrinkage and there will be formation of the typical dent mark on the in the middle of the galphon coated component. Hmm. So, there you have to put some extra liquid so that this problem is, is this problem is probability of this dent formation can be minimized. So, another coating composition in galvalium where you use 55 percent aluminum. So, as you are using 55 percent of aluminum it is always better this is typical hyper eutectic composition. So, you will find typical uh, primary or uh, dendrites of the primary dendrites of uh, typical uh, aluminum uh, in aluminum zinc intermetallics, but uh, here you have to add a little bit of silicon because if you do not add silicon then naturally the fluidity of the bath will be quite low. So, usually 1 to 2 percent uh, silicon is added. So, if you add this silicon naturally fluidity increases, but on the other hand there is also that silicon whisker formation at the interface. Hmm. So, this problem is always uh, there, but uh, it is uh, to some extent beneficial because when you have these uh, whiskers of uh, thin naturally so whiskers of silicon naturally it can also improve the strength of the bond strength of the coating to a large extent. And from the whisker itself there is a microstructure development when you do solidification processing when it is solidified actually and at the interface there is a Fe 2 L 5 layer formation uh, which is actually quite thick and the possibility of outbursting is also minimized. So, as I mentioned you that these are the three important ways by which you do galvanizing process and each and every step is having uh, each and every um, each and every process or bath is having its own advantages and disadvantages and also there is a lot of cost associated with aluminum addition. So, if you add aluminum to a large extent the temperature of operation goes high and that is also the bath also maintenance of the fluidity of the bath can have the you have to take proper precaution to do that. These all problems are always there, but again some of the advantages you get which is not possible to achieve by the uh, single step normal single galvanizing process. So, another uh, another way of uh, typical uh, reducing the possibility of the uh, stress uh, stress which are uh, possibility of the relieving the stress or maybe minimizing the possibility of the uh, this uh, metal haze formation is by galvanizing operation. So, galvanizing operation is nothing but after galvanizing you go for typical annealing operation. Hmm. So, there are three types of galvanizing process one is type 0 which is applied for under alloyed coating containing predominantly zeta phase where time is quite less. So, where you do not get any other phase, but only zeta phase and type 1 galvanizing which you apply for those case where optimum alloy coating is there less than 1 micron 
interfacial gamma layer and an overlaid coating of delta phase interdispersed to interspersed with small amount of zeta phase and overall layer coating which you have very thick gamma layer and an overlay coating containing delta phase and basal plane cracks perpendicular to the coating substrate interface. So, in all coating in all uh, galvanizing you will find that this is type 0 galvanizing, type 1 galvanizing and type 2 galvanizing. So, here you will find that in all cases what you do is that you basically change the time of the annealing operation. So, time of galvanizing is temperature of galvanizing usually from 600 to 650 degrees Celsius and depending on the alloy which you are using your time also changes. So, with optimum tiny timing you can have the typical best microstructure which is consisting of or for example, at the end of the galvanizing you can have the microstructure containing zeta phase on the top then delta phase in the middle and the interfacial layer very thin interfacial layer. Hmm. So, this is nothing but typical annealing operation to homogenize the microstructure and also to release the stress uh, which is developed in the galvanizing process which is developed by galvanizing process. Now, if you talk about the uh, typical uh, corrosion rate or maybe lifetime of different uh, coated product you will find that uh, by addition of the aluminum your uh, corrosion loss average corrosion loss is reduced to a large extent. So, aluminum addition is very good because it is not only reduces the possibility of the intermetallic formation at the interface, but it also reduces the possibility of typical um, uh, it also reduces the possibility of uh, uh, reduces the uh, corrosion loss to a large extent. Hmm. So, it is very important that uh, you do add aluminum and you apply galphon bath where your uh, service environment is quite uh, hectic in terms of the environmental species like severe marine environment or in marine environment. So, in brief we can say that in this particular uh, talk we discussed about uh, the hot deep galvanizing process and its importance uh, particularly the importance of using different baths in hot dipping operation like galphon and galvalium bath and also the galvanizing operation which is very important and still work research work is going on to minimize the typical intermetallic formation by addition of different ternary, ter ternary element like aluminum, silicon, copper, titanium. So, effect of those elements are also uh, being studied to a large extent and uh, finally, you do optimize the process parameters for galvanizing operation. So, that you get the desired result, uh, you get the desired homogeneous microstructure with minimum stress level in the coated product. Thank you very much.